Hey booktube, it's Charlie from Reader Turned Writer and today I am doing my June 2018 wrap-up. A couple things before I jump into the wrap-up. First, I passed 100 subscribers and I'm really really excited about that because that is huge for me. I, a couple months into doing booktube, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get past like 30 something and so I was I'm just really excited to reach that number and I wanted to thank all of you for that because I I really really love doing booktube. It's one of my favorite things to do and I love being able to talk with all of you about books and comment and see the videos that you do and be able to make content that actually reaches some people and so it's so exciting for me so thank you so much for that. I also wanted to apologize because I feel like I have been a little bit MIA on booktube recently. I haven't been watching as many YouTube videos and commenting and, and, and everything and I haven't been posting as often and everything. I have just been so busy. Life has just suddenly gotten like absolutely crazy. The The baby's due on August 6th and so it's just like a month away and I've been doing so much to try and get ready for that. We've been trying to do our yard. We're trying to put a lawn in and a fence in kind of on our own so that we can save the money and it's just been a way bigger job than we were originally thinking that it would be and so it's taking us forever and we've just had a lot to do like we my husband and I took a day and drove out to find a van because we couldn't find one here where we live and now we're trying to sell our car and that's turning into a bigger hassle than it was and just my husband my husband's business he teaches programming online and the software that he uses to teach has been kind of declining and so his business has been declining with it and so he's trying to pump out some products to raise our income again and so everything has just been like insane and we're going out of town for a week for the 4th of July because if you're not uh if you don't live in the U.S. I don't know if you know we celebrate Independence Day on the 4th of July and my family does this huge party and then I have a friend getting married on Saturday and so we're going out of town for the whole week and and like in two hours we're leaving and so I just I really quickly wanted to record a couple of videos so that I could actually post some stuff to YouTube and if I normally watch your videos and I haven't been I'm really sorry I want to go watch them it's just YouTube has not been the top priority for me I've been trying to read still and I've been trying to try and do some booktube stuff but honestly baby prep is the thing that comes very first and my family my kids spending time with my kids still and I only have so much energy and time and so especially being eight months pregnant it's, I don't have a lot of energy and so I apologize for that but I promise things will slow down here soon as we finish up all of our stuff and then I will be kind of back and I have some material already ready for when the baby comes so that won't be an issue and so yeah Anyways, I'll jump into my uh, wrap up now so it's not like super super long because I did read quite a few books this month and I'll try and keep it short. For my stats, last month I read 13 books, brought me to a total of 65 books for the year, and the page number for last month I read 3,760-ish pages. Five of those were written by female authors and seven of those were written by male authors, which is surprising because I normally read more female than male, but last month I read a lot of male authors. One of them was by various authors, so I didn't know whether to put female or male. Bought 30 books. I went to a thrift store while we were out visiting my family last month and they had so many more books than the thrift store by our house and I ended up buying a whole bunch of books. I did donate one book. <laughs> I told my husband that I will not buy any books in July and I am sticking with that. Of the books I read, they were really good books. Nine of them were five star, five star reads for me. I rated nine of them five stars, which was surprising to me, but I was really happy because I haven't had a really good reading month in a long time. Two of them were four star, two of them were three star, and I had zero, one, or two star. I also did not DNF a single book. Two of the books I read I was able to check off of my 2018 TBR list. One was a library book, five I owned, five were ebooks, and two were audiobooks. Although technically I listened to three audiobooks, just one of them, I also kind of read, the, I switched between and so I just counted that in the hardcover. I read a whole bunch of different genres. So I read three classics. One fantasy, one romance, one mystery, two contemporary, one sci-fi, one historical fiction, 
one poetry, one anthology, which is also rare for me, and one self-help type book. So that's it for my stats. I'll jump right into the books. The first book I read is I Am Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells. I only have the dust jacket because my husband's reading it right now. And I love this. I gave it five stars. I was super interested in the serial killer aspect of it. The premise is basically a teenage uh, sociopath. No. Yeah, sociopath. Is that what you call? He, he like doesn't really feel emotions or empathy and things like that. He He's really interested in serial killers, partially because he doesn't want to become a serial killer and then a serial killer comes to his town. And so it's just, it's super, super interesting. Um, they talk a lot about serial killers and like the psychology behind them and everything. And it's really, I loved, I loved learning about the ways that he the steps that he would take so that he wouldn't become a serial killer and different things like that. I, I will warn you it has some supernatural aspects to it which took me off guard a little bit and I think that people who don't like this book it's usually because they don't actually like the supernatural aspect to it and at first I didn't like that either although the ending I can see why Dan Wells did wrote it that way. This is actually Dan Wells first book and so I didn't realize that before but I can see why now. I still actually think I would have liked the book more if there hadn't been the supernatural aspect to it, but it was still a really good book, five star read for me. Next I listened to Where the Redford Grows by Wilson Rawls, and this is one that I've been wanting to read for a long time. I gave it five stars as well, I absolutely loved it. I am Christian and I really loved the Christian aspects to it because he, the his faith in God was a really big theme throughout the book and I really really liked the way the author did it where the boy would pray to God for help and then and then he would act and he was always solving problems too and I really liked that as well and of course the relationship between him and his dogs is just beautiful and tragic and everything and so I really liked that and I want to go watch the movie now, the new Disney movie that, or newer Disney movie that, that came out I think in the early 2000s, I'm not sure. I want to go watch it now that I read the book, but it was really, really good. And the narrator also did a great job. Next, I read Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and this is like a really short, like essay type thing, uh, just talking about nature. I gave it five stars. I thought it was beautiful. It's definitely one that I would want to like go back and actually like study with the hardcover and like underline things and you know because. I don't feel like I got everything out of it that I could have because I just read it straight through, but it is definitely worth going back and rereading and kind of studying because there's a lot in there that he talks about and I thought it was really beautiful and poetic. Next I read The Heart That Truly Loves by Susan Evans McLeod and I loved this book. It is definitely an LDS based book because fam it, it's about a girl who worked for a family who was converted to the LDS church and that family left to go, left, they were on the east coast and they left to go to Missouri with the saints. So the servant goes home instead of going with them and while she's home she meets an LDS missionary who's headed to England and kind of starts to like, like they have some feelings for each other and he leaves on his mission and then it's just kind of her story of what happens after that. and. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to give away spoilers in case anybody actually reads it, but it is so beautiful. Her story is beautiful. It was way unexpected. So many things happened where I was like, wait, what? How is that happening? And the ending wasn't like, didn't catch me off guard at all. The ending was totally predictable, but throughout there were so many different times when I was like, wait, what? How? You know, and I absolutely loved her story because it was heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time and just she's such a strong character and Susan Evans McLeod also is just a beautiful writer. The way that she says things I love. I love the way that she writes and some of the phrases she uses and her characters. I love Susan Evans McLeod as an author. Then I also listened to The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I liked The Wind in the Willows. I did not love it. I actually gave it three stars. It was entertaining to me, and I do want to read the sequel. There's another book after it that I, written by the same author, I guess. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I liked it enough to want to read that. I just, I really didn't like 
it, it was like the characters were were not quite enough for me, the character development, I guess. And and I'll you can go check out my my review of it on Goodreads if you want to know more. Then I listened to Alcatraz number no. two by Brandon Sanderson. I gave it five stars. It was definitely a great book, like all Brandon Sanderson books. The Alcatraz series is a little bit different because it's a lot sillier. The humor in it is more aimed at middle grade type kids, and so even though all of the normal stuff, the characters and the plot and the plot twists and everything that Brandon Sanderson usually does, it's all there. It's just underneath a layer of kind of sillier, more childish type things. Like weird things happen with the plot and you know, the characters make silly jokes all the time and the narrator is obnoxious a little bit and but it's still it's really well done and super funny and if you like Brendan Sanderson or if you like middle grade I would definitely recommend the Alcatraz. Then I finally finished The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dum Dumas and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I, it took me forever to get through it but especially the first half. I actually read the second half this month, which is about 500 pages in this book. And so I, you know, the first half was just harder for me to get into. I think if I read it again, I'd be able to get through it a lot faster. Uh, just because I'd be able to, I would, first of all, I would focus on it more because I w really wasn't focused on it for the first half. This month I focused on it a lot more and was able to get through it because of that. But I also would just understand more of what was going on because he spends a lot of time in the first half with characters where you're like, why are we with this character? I don't understand. But then later it like all ties in and you're like, oh, I get it. I see why we followed that character now. Or I understand the importance of that character where at the beginning you're like, I don't even know who this is, you know? And so, but I, I do think it was wordy. He used a lot of words to get the story across, but the story is beautiful. The character development is amazing. The ending is so good, much better than the movie. It's just the themes in it are just so thought provoking and deep and, you know, themes of, there is a fly in this room. It's driving me crazy. But it has a lot of themes about justice and revenge and forgiveness that are just so beautifully done with so many different characters, not just Edmund, but especially with Edmund, and it's so beautiful. If you haven't read this classic, it is a big classic, so it could be a little intimidating, but it's definitely worth the read, and I would definitely recommend it. Then I read Give Your Child the World by Jamie C. Martin, and I gave this one five stars as well. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a while, but I haven't because it was kind of expensive on the ebook, but then the ebook was on sale this, this month for like $2. I follow her email list, and I absolutely love it. But Give Your Child the World was a little bit different than I was expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be more about like using just just in general how to expose your children to the world. And it was that way a little bit, but she focused more on using books to do that, which was still really great. And it was also really short. It was like 80 pages or something. And then the rest of the book was actually a book list that was really well organized and I'm excited to have the book list but it took me off guard that I, I like was reading it and then I was like oh I'm done reading it because you don't sit and read the book list you know and so it took me off guard that part but I did really enjoy it and I thought it was very well done. Next I read The Martian by Andy Weir and I really enjoyed The Martian as well. I gave it four stars. I really really loved the problem solving aspect of it. It actually reminded me a little bit of the the new Netflix original where they redid Lost in Space. My husband and I watched that recently and absolutely loved it. By the way, it is very, very clean, family friendly, one of the best shows that we've watched in a long time. We cannot wait for season two. So if you haven't watched it, you should go watch it. I didn't think I would like it because Lost in Space does not sound like my kind of show, but my husband started watching it with me kind of there and tricked me into watching it and we ended up loving it. And the problem solving aspect of it was one of the things that I loved. I was actually worried because a lot of people say there's a lot of science in The Martian and there is, there's a lot of science talk and different things, but it didn't, it didn't bother me at all because it was all related to him trying to solve the problems that he was coming up against. And I just thought that was so interesting. 
I also thought they did a really good job of keeping the reader's interest in how they moved to different perspectives at the right times and different things. Just as I was like, okay, I'm, you know, this story's starting to drag, they'd switch and I'd be interested again. The reason I didn't give it five stars was the excessive use of language. It was very, very full of crude language, like not just like damn and hell, but like the F word and the S word and that it, it bothered me. It was enough that it bothered me because they used it all the time and I didn't feel like it really added to the story. Although some people might think that it was funny. I don't know because I it felt like they were trying to use it to get the humor across. It was also worse because I did listen to a lot of it, which really helped me also get through like the sciencey parts of it. I listened to it while I was doing some deep cleaning, but the language just really bothered me. Like, I don't know that I would buy this book because of the language, but I'm really touchy with that. Um, not as touchy as some. Words like damn and hell don't bother me at all. But but I really just don't like some of the more crude language, some of the, the more crude swear words. And they used so many of them so often in this book that I just couldn't give it five stars. Then I read The Penderwicks, the first book, by Janine Birdsall, and I absolutely love this book as well. I got it on a Kindle deal, it's one that I've been wanting to read for a while. It's a middle grade novel, kind of a middle grade contemporary, about four sisters and their dad who go on vacation, and it's all about their vacation and the adventures they have and the people they meet, and it is brilliant. Like, if you haven't read The Penderwicks, you should go read them. Read it. I know it's a series, I want to read the rest of the series, but it was so well done. The sisters, the characters, they were like so unique and funny and their interactions together were just hilarious and perfect and I loved the people that they met and the whole plotline and everything. It was just, I absolutely loved it. I, I read it so fast because it was so good, I just couldn't put it down. Next, I read The View from Saturday by E. L. Konigsberg, and this is an author that I was wanting to read more of, and then I saw this book at a thrift store, so I picked it up, and it was really, really good as well. It was also kind of a middle grade type contemporary, maybe YA, I'm not sure, I'm not sure of the genre, but it was about these kids, it's probably middle grade, because it was about these seventh graders who were in a, what is it called? an academic bowl with their school, and the 7th graders had never beat the 8th graders, much less the ninth graders, but then this team basically was winning. They beat the 7th graders, and they went on to beat the 8th graders, or the, they beat the 8th graders, and then they went on to beat the ninth graders and stuff, and then they went on to state, and it's basically a book about how the team gets together and why the teacher chose them as the team, and I just really loved it. I love the way that this author writes. I think this is a, the kind of book that you would either really like or really not like because of the way it's written because first of all it jumps around the timeline a lot which sometimes bothers me but the way that she did it I actually didn't mind. Um, it also jumps around perspectives a lot and I thought she did a really good job with that as well. I really really love the themes. There's a really overall giant theme of just kind of kindness in general and I really really loved the way that she did that and the subtle way that it was portrayed. and. Yeah, it's just one that to really understand it, you would have to read it, and you'll either really like it or really not, I think. So, yeah, if you like contemporaries, I would definitely suggest giving this a try or this author, although I have heard that some of her other books weren't quite as good. So I'd be, I'm interested to try them and see if I like them or not. Next, I read A Treasury of Irish Fairy and Folk Tales. This is one that I got for Christmas. This is a really beautiful copy of it, and so I did want to read it. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot about just Irish culture and folk tales and things that I didn't know before. They have it kind of broken up into different sections about different types of creatures and some of them I enjoyed more than others. Some of them were more interesting than others or easier to read. I do think that I would have enjoyed it more if I had slowed down a little, like if I were to ever read it again or read a similar book, I would try and read like one or two a day or something rather than trying to read. I was trying to read about 20 pages a day so that I could finish for the read -a the TBR readathon. I gave this one four stars because I thought it was good. I like I said I think I would enjoy it more if I slowed down a little bit. The last book I read was Crispin's Point by Johanna Reardon and I I 
gave this one three stars. This was a free ebook that I had on my Kindle and I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun light read. I didn't think the writing was as well done as it could have been. One of the things is that she, the, the author kind of jumped around viewpoints a little bit but in a weird way where like all of a sudden sometimes we were on someone else's viewpoint or I don't know it was weird it kind of threw me off a little bit I didn't like it and then there was also just a lot of telling and summarizing like oh and then she did this and this and this and this to get us to the next point in the plot or oh and then these things happened and <laughs> so that kind of pulled me out of the story as well and so I didn't like that as much but it surprised me because Christmas Point the name and the title or the cover both of them I was not expect expecting like a Christian romance contemporary story out of it but that's what it is is it's a Christian romance and about a novelist who's Christian she's actually the main character is a Christian romance writer <laughs> and she's she really likes the pastor she moves to the small town and she likes the pastor but for some reason she just can't bring herself to even like talk with him and he likes her but he just doesn't want to either and they end up like dating these other people instead and so you know how it goes in romance novels and it was really interesting and fun to read but I was not expecting that I do like Christian romances so I was fine with it but it was definitely different than I was expecting Anyways, I better wrap this up because my wrap up is getting way too long. Have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? What books did you read in June? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in my next video.